Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Today I am showing you how to use the new Cricut foil transfers on the Great Maker Show and Tell. So Cricut just introduced a fun new tool and material, their Cricut foil transfer tool and foil transfer sheets. Cricut sent me a kit and some extra transfer sheets in advance so I could test it out and tell you what I thought and I am super excited about this. Thank you so much Cricut. Now I must say the best thing about the Cricut foil is how easy it is to use. Within minutes of opening the kit, this is the kit right here, I was able to create a beautiful foiled card. I've now made a number of different projects, as you can see, with the foil, and I'm so excited to show you and tell you everything that I've learned so far. You are going to love this. First, let me explain how this works. You just put the special Cricut foil transfer tool, looks just like this, into your Explorer or Maker. Choose or upload a design in Cricut Design Space. Change the line type to foil. You can have fine, medium, or bold. Put your base material on your cutting mat. Tape a foil transfer sheet on top of your material. Load your mat into your Cricut and press the flashing button, like usual, right? <laughs> then sit back and wait while your Cricut presses the foil into your material. That's my favorite part. <laughs> I love that the Cricut foil transfer is pressure activated, not heat activated like the foil quill, which means no heat is involved at all. Cricut special foil transfer tool presses down into the foil sheet, transferring the foil onto your base material like this. No special adapter is needed. The foil transfer tool fits right into clamp B on your Cricut, just like that. So unlike the foil quill, you don't need another power source to use it. Just your Cricut, the tool, and a foil transfer sheet on top of your base material. The foil transfer kit comes with three differently sized tips, fine, medium, and bold, as you can see here, as well as 12 four inch by six inch transfer sheets and tape. And I love that fact that there's three tips. I like the bold one the best. I think that like you can see that one right here, but fine tip and the medium tip are great for really intricate and small designs. Now you can transfer the Cricut foil onto a variety of different materials such as cardstock like this, light, medium, and heavy, adhesive backed paper, faux leather like the earrings, foil embossed paper, watercolor paper, vellum, printable vinyl, and craft board. The smoother the surface, the smoother your foil transfers. I see many pretty foiled cards and shiny faux earrings and gorgeous craft bo board boxes in our future. And yes, before you ask, you can cut and foil in the same project, which is exactly what I did here. The Cricut Foil Transfer Tool is fully integrated with Cricut Design Space, which means you can combine multiple line types, including draw, score, cut, and foil, all in one project. You can even change the Foil Transfer Tool tip in a single project, combining different sizes if you want. It's really cool. So I'm going to show you how all of this works by doing two projects with you. The first is a pretty foil feather card, this one right here, um, which you can see in silver and purple foil. The second is this magnificent mandala letter, which you can make as wall art or even as a card like I did here. I have the designs free for you to use on my blog, including the entire alphabet of these mandala letters over at jennifermaker.com. So let me start by giving you a closer look at the transfer kit, the foil transfer kit, and then I will walk you through the entire process of, you, of making these fun foil projects. Step one, get your Cricut foil transfer tools and supplies. Here we have the Cricut foil transfer kit, and inside you will find the tool itself and everything that you need to do a initial project. Um, here's a little instruction booklet. They give you a sampler pack of foil and tape. They're all in this package. And here's the tool itself in this blister pack, this blue housing. And these three tips are all you need to foil on the Cricut. It's really very cool. I love how there's different tips. Let me show you how you insert a tip into the housing. You just put the end of the tip, the one that doesn't have the little lines and silver part onto it, right into the end of the housing. It doesn't fall out because there's a magnet and when you want to remove it, just press the plunger and the tip comes right out. 
So it's really easy to change them and uh, you can store the extra tips back into that plastic case. You can use the Cricut foil transfer tool on both the Cricut Explorer and the Cricut Maker. It goes right in clamp B. I'm going to use my Maker today, but you, I've done projects on both the Explorer and Maker. All right, so we've got it in our clamp. Now we're going to make a project together. Let's go ahead and close the Explorer. Now for the project, I'm going to show you how to make a feather card that I designed. Now to make the project I'm going to show you in this video, you'll want your sampler pack of foil, a sheet of cardstock 12 by 12, and a green cutting mat. For step two, you'll want to get a design for a foil project. I'm going to show you how to get my feather card project. Go to jennifermaker.com and click on libraries. Get a password if you don't have one, otherwise enter the library. And you are looking for design 241 right here. Just go ahead and click that and it'll download to your computer or device. Open it up and you're looking for the SVG file right here. Now go to Cricut Design Space, click upload. Click Upload Image, click Browse, and find the SVG file that you downloaded. Uh, once you've got, make sure it says SVG at the end, and then click Open. All right, here it is, ready to go. You can see everything is in there, click Save. And then once you've uploaded it, select it and click Insert Images. Now it's on your canvas and we're ready to prepare it for scoring, foiling, and cutting. You need to find the cut layer like this and change the line type to foil, fine, medium, or bold. You get to pick. You can also change the color so that you can see what it looks like. So I'm gonna keep this as silver and I'm gonna use bold because I, that's what I want for my project. And you'll, you'll see here on the right that it says foil bold. Now you have, before you can actually do this project, you need to select everything and click attach and then it should be good to go. Of course, you're welcome to change the color of your base cardstock. It's really just so that you can see how it's going to look. I'll go ahead and change this from green to black so I can make sure that it looks good and it does. So this file is now ready to go. We have the score line, the cut line, and the foil feather and everything is attached. Your Everything must be attached for this to work. That's important. Otherwise, your Cricut will want to foil onto a different mat and score on a different mat and all that stuff. Of course, if you don't want to score, feel free to just hide that layer. If you don't even want to cut the card, you can hide that layer as well. But, but to do this feather card, this is what you'll want your project to look like. Again, be sure that everything is attached so that everything gets done in their right spots. When you're ready, click make it and you'll see it show up on your mat and this is exactly how it will cut. You'll see it says score, foil, bold, and cut. So it's going to do all three of these things which I think is really, really cool. In step three, you want to tape your foil transfer sheet to your base material. All right, so here we have our mat and our paper and our foil. Let's start with the mat. We're gonna take the cover off of our machine mat. Always do that. Put it somewhere safe where it won't get dust on it. Then we'll put our cardstock onto our mat. And again, I'm using 12 inch by 12 inch cardstock. This will result in a five inch card when we're all done. Now I'm going to open this sampler pack and I want to give you a tip. Be sure you cut off this uh, adhesive bit at the top here with scissors before you even try to take that foil out of the pack or your foil sheets will get stuck to it. Don't ask how I know this. <laughs> All right, so once you've got that open, go ahead and pull out a sheet of uh, foil. Now they're inside this pack, there are silver and there's gold foil transfer sheets as well as several sheets of tape. That's the white sheets in the back. And the tape is very important for how this works. I'm gonna show you how that, that works, but there's it's all provided here for you, which is great. All right, so one sheet of the tape and one sheet of the foil transfer. Whenever you use the foil transfer, you wanna have the shiniest side up. So you can see here I have the super shiny reflective side up. Now, the next question is where do we put this on our mat, right? It's a lot smaller than our paper. So what we do is we go back to Cricut Design Space and check where it is on the mat. Now here you can see the feather is between seven inches and nine inches on our mat. 
You can see the numbers up there at the top, right? So we want to place our foil transfer sheet in that same position. So we just uh, compare it to the measurements right on the mat, the mat, the top there. It matches what we saw on the screen. And this looks just right there, seven to nine inches there. So this is the right position. It's important that your foil transfer cover the entire design as well as have extra room for the tape. You don't want to have the tape covering any part of the foil design or it won't transfer properly. It could even start ripping your foil transfer material. I taped it here first, but I decided it really needed to be higher up just in case that feather was at all close to that tape line. So I'm actually going to remove this and um, move that foil transfer sheet up to the very top of my cardstock. So there's no, there's no overlap. We don't, you don't want to have tape covering any part of your design. So make sure you compare your design on the screen carefully to exactly where you're putting your um, tape. Okay, you want to make sure you've got plenty of foil and you know, uh, plenty of margins around that. So now you want to tape it down. This will be a little tricky. The transfer sheet is a very thin film and it has a mind of its own. <laughs> But uh, I like to if I hold it down when I'm taping it, it seems to uh, apply smoother. And that's important. If you have any like giant wrinkles in there, it's probably going to have an issue. Now it's okay if there's just a little bit of tugging and it's not perfectly flat and straight. Um, but your goal is to get it as smooth as you can. There's no need to stress about it though. You can see right here, it's not perfectly smooth. It still works out fine. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Don't stress about how flat it is, except if you have a really glaring fold or wrinkle. All right. All right, in step four, we're going to select our settings, insert our tools, and load the Cricut. All right, so now we click continue over in Cricut Design Space, and we um, hook up our Maker or our Explorer. Now the base material should be should match what you're using. I'm going to use light cardstock and I'm going to set my pressure to less on my maker because I found that that makes a difference on the maker itself. And the Explorer on the other hand seems to be fine with the default or even more pressure, but the maker needs less pressure. And that's important when you're going to do this because if you have too much pressure, you can actually rip your transfer sheet. You might need to do a little experimenting to find out what works best with your particular machine. But if you're using a maker, I highly recommend less pressure. And if you're using an Explorer, default pressure should be just fine. All right, and then the design space very helpfully tells you what you need to do. Next, it tells you to load your scoring wheel in clamp B. By the way, if you're using a scoring stylus, you can click edit tools and change the tool right there. And um, then it also comes down, it tells you what's coming up. So we've got the silver foil, the foil transfer tool, bold tip, because I chose bold to remember, and then our fine point blade. So it's going to score, foil, and cut all in all at the same time, which is really cool. I do want to note that it is important that you select the right base material. Do not select anything thicker. Um, if you're going to err on any side, err on the side of it's a little bit too light instead of too thick. If it's too thick, it's just going to increase the pressure and result in it could result in tearing of your foil transfer sheet. Uh, this is what, what I found work to work best in my maker. So less pressure and the light cardstock. Even if my cardstock is a little bit heavier, uh, this seems to work the best. Now your settings may vary. Always do a test whenever you can so you can see what's going to work best for you. All right, so we've got everything ready to go. I'm going to, going to go ahead and load my mat into my machine. And we need to first put in our scoring tool. So I'm going to put in my scoring wheel into clamp B. Remember, if you're using the stylus, it goes into clamp A instead. Uh, or you can skip scoring altogether. I just really wanted to try doing all three things at once because I think it's so cool that you can do this in the first place. All right, so 
We've got it's going to go ahead and score it right now for us. I love how Cricut Design Space tells us exactly what it's doing. So right now it's checking that the scoring wheel is the right tool, and then it's going to go ahead and score just right down the middle of our card so it's easier for us to fold later. Now when it's done scoring, this screen comes up and tells you what to do next. Um, very important, do not unload the mat. Instead, you want to take out the scoring tool and put in the foil transfer tool. And it tells you which one you had picked. You want the bold tip that has the three lines at the bottom. And that goes in clamp B, right? And then it also reminds you to tape your foil on your base material. We've already done that. Now it'll take about five to six minutes to, do, to foil this feather. So be a little bit patient, but the cool thing is that the Cricut's doing all the hard work for us. Um, always, It's always worth the wait. So I put it up here so you could see its progress and I sped it up for you, of course, because you don't need to sit here through six minutes of making the feather. It's really quite detailed though, which is what I think makes it so pretty. When it's done, it's going to prompt you in what to do next. Note that it says to remove the foil. This is important. You don't want to cut over the foil. It's just going to make a giant mess and um, could will probably transfer foil to your card in places that you don't want it. So when you're done foiling, be sure to remove the tape from your project. And by the way, don't forget you can reuse this tape. So I just put it back onto my, my tape sheet. So remove all the foil, take the foil off before you continue. And there we can see that it worked, that's awesome. Now take a look at this foil. You can see that it completely removes all of the foil from where it transferred it to the paper. I mean, you can actually see right through it if you held it up to the light. So you can't reuse these foil sheets because once that, that foil is transferred, it's, it's done and it's just not gonna look good. But what you can do is reuse your tape right? And you can save any scraps. So like the right half of this foil sheet, it's totally fine for a small project. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it off and save it. So I, if I want to do something small later, I and I, <laughs> and I run out of foil transfer sheets, I have something. So go ahead and save scraps like this. Just don't save them if you've got, if the foil has been removed from them. So now we are prompted to put in our fine point blade so we can cut the card. So we take out our foil transfer tool and we put in our fine tip blade. Close the clamp and press the flashing button and it will cut out uh, the, the shape of the card. And it's not just a rectangle, it actually has a shape around the feather to make the really cool feather design on the front of the card. Now, if you are like me and you used a maker and you set your pressure to less, you may want to change your pressure when you go to cut it, which is what I did here. So if you want to change the pressure on your cut, you'll want to pause your machine just right after it starts and you'll get a screen like this and you can then make a change before you continue. So to make a change, just go ahead and click the green continue button. And now you can change the pressure. And I'm gonna change it to more because that's what I usually use when I cut cardstock. It works best for me. Your mileage may vary, but you can, you can change the pressure if you pause it. And then it gives you the option to change it. Right, so this is a really useful tip if you are, especially if you're using a maker because of that pressure. So go ahead and click back and then click uh, the flashing button on your Cricut to continue cutting it out. All right, the cut is finished. We get the message on our screen that tells us to unload it by pressing the unload button and we're done. For step five, we're gonna unload the Cricut and remove the card from the mat. So we just press that unload button I always recommend that you check to make sure to cut all the way through. <laughs> always a good idea. So here is our finished card. It's a little bit too bright right here, but it looks amazing in person. <laughs> so flip your mat over onto your surface and gently pull your mat away from your project. Doing this means that you won't curl your card. Now, because there's a lot of pressure being applied when the foil is transferred, you might find that it's, it sticks a little bit more in the section where there's foil. So just gently pull it away slowly if you have to um, until you've got it off. And there we go. We have our card off. Let's fold it up and see what it looks like. And 
that's it. It's done. Very easy card to make, very pretty. Now imagine doing it with by adding someone's name on the front or a sentiment or a special message, all in foil. It would look so cool. If you decide to use a font with this project, be sure to use a writing font. And be sure to attach everything before you go to make your project. Now there's other colors like the sampler pack in jewel tones. I wanna show you what it looks like to use a different color of foil on a different color of cardstock. So I'm gonna use this light green cardstock and a sheet of the purple foil. And uh, these are the four by six size, so it's the same as the samples that came in your transfer kit. Um, but it's great for making cards and doing other small embellishments. Again, it comes with lots of tape sheets, so you're not gonna run out of tape for your projects. And inside, there are eight sheets of the green, the purple, and the blue. They're so pretty. Let's use a sheet of the purple and make the same feather card on the light green cardstock so you can see what it looks like. So we just place our cardstock in the same position we did before. Uh, you can really, you can make two cards out of one sheet of cardstock. You'll need two, two sheets of the foil transfer, however, to do that. But let's just make one. Again, we put it between seven and nine inches at the top of your mat. Be sure that you're, you're putting your foil transfer sheet in the right position and tape it all down. I let be sure to tape all four sides. Don't worry about a little bit of tugging like you see here, just get it as smooth as you can. And if you're going to make the card again, you're gonna want a scoring tool, like the scoring wheel or the scoring stylus to do that center fold, your foil transfer tool, and of course, a fine point blade to actually cut the card out. So this is everything you need to do the foil feather card. So I've transferred the purple foil to my green cardstock. Now I want you to note that there's a little hole in it. This hole happened during the foiling process and it means that my pressure was too high. But I think it looks fine. I, I believe in progress over perfection. N none of my projects are ever perfect. All right, now I wanna show you how to make this beautiful mandala letter because I am in love with this and the way that it foils. It's just so pretty. So this is the silver foil and the bold tip on the foil transfer tool. All right, it's really very simple. One sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock, and one foil transfer sheet. To find the design, go to jennifermaker.com, enter my library, and look for design 240. It's right here, you'll wanna click it, unzip it, and upload the SVG to the Cricut Design Space. There's no prep needed other than to make sure it's the right size for your project. So here we have all the things that we need for this project. We have our foil transfer tool, and inside I've, I've inserted the bold tip, the one with the three lines. So that's important for this size of a project, I think. And remember, you can use the foil transfer tool in both an explore or a maker. Again, I'm gonna use it in my maker. I just tend to use that more because I love my maker. <laughs> but you can definitely use it in the explore. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the tool into the clamp B. And we're going to use the silver, but there's also gold. So it's completely up to you. I just love the silver on the blue. I thought it was very striking. And this is a sheet of 12 by 12, 65 pound cardstock. It is Recollections brand. Really what matters is that you use the smoothest cardstock you can find. This one actually has a texture, so I flipped it over to use the non-textured side. Uh, the smoother it is, the smoother your foil transfers, and it just looks nicer in my opinion. But you know, sometimes the, the texture can make a cool effect too. And I'm using my green cutting mat. So I'm gonna put my paper right onto it. Now this is gonna use the full 12 by 12 uh, sheet. So I put my cardstock onto my cutting mat. So I'm gonna use one sheet of the uh, silver foil transfer. And I want to make sure that you notice there's two different sides. Uh, when you first open it, the dull side is on top. That side goes against your paper, okay? You want the silver shiny reflective side to go up. So you tape it so that the shiniest side is up. So tape it just like this. So make sure the shiniest side is up um, and that otherwise it won't transfer properly. That's very important. And then you just line it up with your cardstock. This is the simple, a really simple project. 
and we use the included tape strips and we tape all four sides down. There's no other prep that's necessary for this project. I'm just gonna insert it and click the flashing button to start foiling your beautiful letter. I will speed this up for you so that you're not waiting. It took about mm, maybe a little less than 10 minutes to cut this particular letter out. Every letter will be a little different. Doesn't this look cool? There's going to be a lot of extra scrap here that we can save for another project. All the parts that didn't didn't foil, didn't transfer the foil, we can cut those out later and reuse them. Just remember you can't reuse the parts that where the foil has transferred already. And now just take off all of your tape. You can reuse it, so you can put it back on your tape sheet if you want or, or store it somewhere else. But there's really a lot of tape you may not need to. Now when you're taking off the tape, um, especially when you have this foil transfer all over your piece of paper, be careful not to press too hard, uh, like when you're trying to take it off, because you can actually transfer the foil to your project, which I actually ended up doing. But not to worry, there's something you can do to solve that problem if you have any little bits of foil that you didn't want to be there, so don't worry. All right, there we go, the tape is off and we get to reveal the beautiful letter. Isn't that amazing? It's so shiny and bold. I love how this looks. I mean, these would make great gifts when they, like you could make one for each person and use their initial. Yeah, I, I this is my favorite of the foiling projects that I've done so far. Now I wanna point out how I have a little bit here in the corner where I was struggling to remove the tape. I accidentally transferred some, but we can remove it with a eraser, really. So you just, and I'm using just a dollar store eraser, nothing fancy. You just um, lightly rub at it and the foil comes off. So if you make any mistakes or anything gets anywhere you don't want it to be, it's really easy to fix and you can see it's all done. So just a simple eraser, like a pencil eraser does the trick. Now to remove it from the mat, flip your project over face down on your surface and gently pull your mat away from your project to avoid curling your paper. And where the foil was pressed down, it might be a little bit harder to remove. So just uh, go slowly and remove the mat. Don't rip it off because um, you'll get, you'll get a, you could have it tear or you could have your paper curl. Uh, but it definitely comes off. So don't worry about that. Just go slowly and remove it. There we go, all finished, and it's beautiful. And if you want, you can put it into a frame and display it, hang it on your wall, put it on a counter. It's a lovely thing. So here are some of the foiling projects I've done. My feather cards and my mandala letters, I put them on cards as well. I also did some earrings on faux leather, which I thought turned out really pretty. Now I created this sort of cheat sheet for myself so I could see what the fine tip and the medium tip and the bold tip look like in different fonts. These are all Cricut fonts. And you can see the difference here between the tips. And again, I really like the bold tip, but then, you know, I'm a, I'm a bold kind of girl, so that makes sense. Now these down here where it says kind is cool. This was me learning how the pressures, the pressure on my two different machines and how I needed to have a little less pressure because there was tearing. So don't worry about that. That was just me learning how this works. I highly recommend doing testing, anything like that. Now this card is done with a fine tip. You can see how really um, intricate it looks with the fine tip versus the bold tip. Now with this one, you can see it didn't quite transfer all the way. This is when I was using too little pressure on my Explorer and I had to switch it to more pressure. This was done on my Maker after both of those as I was learning how to do this and you can see this transferred beautifully. So you experiment with it, try some things out to see what works best for you. But again, I really like the bold the best, and that's what I use for almost all of my projects was the bold tip. But if you're gonna have a really small transfer, you probably are gonna want the fine tip uh, because it'll allow you to see the detail better. I am in love with this foil transfer tool, and I expect you putting foil on everything that I can from now on. I'm not even kidding you. The foil transfer sheets right now come in gold and silver, plus you can get green, purple, and blue. I'm hoping they come out with a copper foil sheet because that's my favorite metal color. 
Now, if you need more help using the Cricut Transfer Sheets, the tool, or anything like that, please be sure to read my ultimate guide at jennifermaker.com slash foil, F-O-I-L. I've got a ton of information there as well as more project ideas like my leaf earrings. I do hope that you found this tutorial helpful. Let me know what you think of it. I love hearing from you. And also let me know what questions you have about using the Cricut foil transfers. Ask me a question in the comments uh, below this video or come on over to my Cricut Crafters Facebook group, which is a ton of fun at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And if you don't yet have a Cricut, to make the, all these cool foil projects, I am holding a giveaway this month for a Cricut cutting machine. You can enter for the chance to win your own Cricut. Get all of the giveaway details at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut giveaway. And that's it for today. If you have an idea for a future tutorial, let me know. I want to show you what you want to learn how to make. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.